All right. So let's, uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's move on. But you get, you get the point, guys. Like, you know, have a, have a good play around with all of these settings in here. The color, the direction, even changing the, the, the actual particle itself. You know, what you can do is you can go into, um, if I can just find it, I'm going to go down to the bottom because it's not expanded. I have to find it. Oh, there we go. Expand to materials. Right now, it's got the default particle, which is inside of Unity. You could just drag this material or a different material down into here, and then that will actually render different materials in into this in this particle system. You know, so play around with that definitely. The forces as well. Play with the random force, uh, the size grow, which is pretty cool. It makes it a lot bigger, and that's kind of cool. That's that's a funky, uh, spacey kind of effect that we've got going on there. I think I might leave that. Problem is right now we can't actually see the ball and it might run real slow with all that going on. But you know, I think it's it's cool because what we've got now is a kind of like layered ghost effect going on, which is just kind of nice, you know. I think I'm kind of digressing a little bit here, guys. I'm sorry. I usually, but I, you can see how kind of fun it is playing around with particle systems. It's it's a lot of fun. So I'm just gonna file save the scene. And save the project just as a habit. Okay, and let me check my next point. Okay, so we want to make the particle splash effect. That is fine. I'm just going to reduce this. Uh, I'm just going to reduce this size grow effect here down to zero. And the reason is is because the particle effect that we're about to make will we'll need some black area so that we can see it clearly. So the next thing is what we're going to have is a spark. Well, every time that the ball hits the wall or hits the paddle, it's going to like spark out like a kind of firework sparks. So if I go to game object, create other and another particle system, which is this one here, and I'm actually going to rename that. So I'm going to click on enter particles underscore. And we're just going to call these sparks. Okay. Now I think the size is okay. What we're going to do is sparks don't exist for a long time they they do die pretty quickly so i'm going to make the the minimum energy and the maximum energy 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 and remember the min energy and the max energy is how long that individual particle exists so it's going to randomize between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 and what we're going to do is it since it's going to come from a single point uh, like all sparks do we're going to go for our, we're going to go ellipsoid x is 0, y is 0, and z is 0, okay? And that's that little dot right there that we've got right now, okay? I want to give it a random velocity in x. I'm just left clicking and dragging here. And that's a little makes it a little bit easy to experiment with. And I'm going to do the same with the y. Left click and drag. Okay. So that's about right. Let's just try 4 and 4. Click enter. And we're going to go down here to the stretch particles, and we're going to say stretched. And we're going to increase the length scale. And the length scale is basically the, the size of the stretch as it moves. Uh, I think it's based on velocity. But that, that can add a pretty cool effect. So as I drag over, you can see these particles getting a little bit longer. I think, um, let's try 8 and 8 on the random velocity. Okay, now what we want is, because right now when a spark happens, it doesn't continually go on and on and on. I mean, when something hits something like a ricochet, we get a quick set of sparks and then they die. In this case, what we want to do here is we want to make it one shot. So as you can see, it's now blasting as opposed to being a continual spray. And we also want to click on auto-destruct here, which means that once, the, once it's done one splash, one render, then it kills itself and destroys itself out of the scene so that it doesn't stay in memory, which is very useful. And it doesn't keep spraying the sparks over and over. Now, you might want that in some cases, so, um, you know, have a play around with that. But in this case, we want the spark to exist, explode, and then dis disappear out, the, out of the scene so that we don't have millions of sparks created, because that would really bog things down. So I think, I think that's okay. Um, so we've got to test it. So what we're going to do is, what we need to do is create this particle sparks here as a prefab. And a prefab basically inside of Unity is a, is a way to 
have things in the game created on the fly, okay? So for example, I'm gonna illustrate. Uh, if I click on enter, command and C or control and C to copy the, the name, okay? And I'm just gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this particles. Right click on the particles folder and create prefab, okay? And I'm just gonna click control and V or command and V to paste the name. And I'm going to drag right now. This is an empty prefab. There's nothing in there. It's just it's just saying it's a it's a template of, of a particular data type. It's just saying, oh, we need uh, this is the type of information it's going to hold. We need to give it the actual information. So in this case, we're going to drag this particle sparks up here, and boom, there you go. So it turns blue, and you can also see this is blue here, meaning it's coming from a prefab. Okay. So a prefab in this case is say that we, every time the ball hits this paddle and wall and this wall and this wall, we don't, we don't have the particles in this game hierarchy already. We need to put them in on the fly as the game is playing. So as the ball hits this wall, we want to instantiate or create one of these particles on the fly. And this is what prefabs are for. It allows you to have some kind of template, say like you have a car or a building, that you can just drag into the scene and then boom it's there it's not it's not something that you have to uh, continually put together th through the development process it's just almost like a um, like a set of information that's organized and therefore you can just drag it in and create it so this might be say like a building I could just drag it into the scene the building would appear and then I could just move it wherever I want it and that's why prefabs are useful in this case the particle we do want to drag it into the scene but we want to do that during gameplay. We can't drag the particles in uh, because the player needs to be playing the game. But we need the ball needs to hit the wall or the paddle for that to happen. Okay. So I hope uh, I hope you guys are with me on that one. So uh, sorry if it's a little bit complicated. Hopefully, when I'm illustrating the code here, that'll help. Okay. So what we want to open up is the ball.js because it's the ball when it hits the wall or the paddle that's going to define when these sparks come to life or when when we uh, create one of these sparks okay so if I click on pong scripts double click on ball and I've already pre-built this code here so you guys can so it's a little bit faster and you guys can just copy it later so variable particle splash which is what we made and this is going to go at the top so this is the actual splash particles that we just created and function on collision enter we're going to paste this down at the bottom okay so this function is on collision enter is if there's a game object like the ball in this case it is the ball and that script is attached to the ball okay which is again it's in this case it's true whenever that ball hits something like a wall or a paddle or anything else that, that is in the game world that can be hit then this function gets called this function will will come to life okay so in this case what we want to do is this is we're going to use this function to to tell us whenever the ball hit the wall or whenever the ball hit the paddle okay because those are the only two objects that the ball is hitting in the game and whenever it does we want to instantiate the particles and instantiate basically is the command to create something inside of the game on the fly when I say on the fly, it means when the game is actually running, when the game is live, or we say during runtime. Okay, so we want to instantiate or create this particle splash, which is this one here, this variable, and transform dot position. The transform is basically this: the ball here, this transform, and the position at any time. So if the ball is up here, then that's where the transform position will be. Okay, so we're saying. At the position of the ball we want to create the the sparks and then the rotation it doesn't matter what the rotation is for the ball but I've just put uh, sorry it doesn't matter what the rotation is of the sparks because they'll always face the camera that's always the cool thing with particle effects they'll always turn to face the camera so even if the camera is here at, at a different angle the particles will turn to face it automatically but I'm just saying just make it uh, the transform rotation the same rotation as the ball just because it needs to have that information inside of this function, okay? So these are the three arguments or the three parameters that we need to send to this instantiate function, okay? So I'm going to click Command and Save or Control and Save if you're on Windows. Go back into Unity, 
looking down on the right here to see if it's compiling. And there shouldn't be any errors, we should be fine. Okay, that looks good. So the ball script here, since you notice that we didn't make this private, this means that this this that this particle splash variable or this particle splash information object can now be viewed inside of the editor here. And remember we said last time it's always useful when we do this is because we can just drag things into there. We can just put this information in by dragging. So we're looking for the particle splash. And if I left click on it, it's up here under particles and just left click and drag it down. And there we go, it's inside there now. And if you left click on it again, it will locate it, it will highlight it inside of the project view. So just to just to note again, if I made this private here, if I actually type the private word in front of that, the it wouldn't appear here. We wouldn't see this variable inside of this inside of the uh, editor. Okay. So let me just click play, and I think this should work now. I don't think there's any steps I've missed. But there we go. I know it's running kind of slow at this moment, guys. So my apologies for that. But as you can see, when it's hitting the the walls, we're getting these sparks, and off the paddle as well. So that's looking cool. Um, you know, well, it's looking okay. It looks better than before, of course. Okay, and then back into the main menu, click play. All right. So I won't play around with the colors here, guys. I'll let you guys do that. But if you want to, what you can do is click on particles here. I'll just very quickly illustrate it. I'll change this to red. Okay, because this is, uh, <laughs> it's always good fun playing around with particles. All right, so there's a red particle. Um, so remember, if you do change something in the particles here, you need to apply that back into the, the prefab, because the prefab, this one, is the one that gets, um, the one that gets created on the fly as the game is live. It's not this one here. This is almost like a blueprint. This is like a one that actually is put inside the game, okay? So you always need to apply it back to the prefab because that's the one that the code is looking for. The one that they, that's the inside of the ball script here. You can see it creates this one. It doesn't create this one down here, okay? So if you ever make any change here in the part in the sparks, um, the one in the game scene, just left click and drag it up here and let go. And that means that the the one that's inside the game scene here gets applied to the prefab, okay? So if I could play again. There we go, red particles. And this is looking kind of freaky. We've got green and blue shards with blue walls, a white ball and red. So, you know, uh, there is an art form to art in games, of course. You know, it's, uh, it's not straightforward. But you know that looks uh, that looks pretty good. Um, you know, it definitely looks more interesting than before. So, you know, definitely, guys, uh, you know, play around with these as well, and and have good fun with parts because you can put them into the menu scene, you can put them into the game scene as we've done here. And I'm just going to quickly check before anything else is done. Assign the particles in the editor. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, it was it was fairly fast. There wasn't a lot of code in this one, but I know a couple of guys. Have commented and, and messaged and said, hey, you know, how do we start to make this look more pretty? So that's what this, this lesson was about. You know, I'm going to, as, as these tutorials go on, and, and especially for this Pong tutorial, I will be continuing this, and I'll be making things look a little bit more pretty as well, and I think we'll be talking about each element, you know, in, in more detail, and we're going to make things look a lot cooler. So, you know, but guys, stay tuned for the next video as well. You know, thanks everyone for your support and for messaging and subscribing. Um, uh, as always guys please subscribe to these videos the subscribe buttons up here or down here somewhere wherever it is um, please click on the uh, uh, on the like button as well it's the big thumb and click on like because that also helps support us and it, and it helps the ranking inside of YouTube so but you know again thanks everyone uh, I look forward to doing the next video stay tuned and happy developing everyone okay bye bye